Bridge song. Oh, I love it. Yeah. As well, it's all about Battersea Power Station. Yeah. Uh, when they started converting that a long time ago, for a long time trying to convert that, one of my jobs when I was working on site was going up and clearing out the pigeons. Ah. I used to have to go up with the scaffold, or, the scaffold and have to, yeah, just, yeah, very glamorous. Times have moved on. Not the um, pigeon poo, the actual pigeons. The pigeons, Before yeah. Before they pooed. Yeah, pigeons and rats trying the, to get them off the scaffold as they converted all the towers. Because, you know, they've redone all the, all the towers. Yeah, of course they so, do. So, yeah, that was one of my jobs back in the day. Well, congratulations. Well done on that. Um, yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. Still, I've done a sterling job. It's still standing. I've so, done all right, haven't I? And so are you. Yeah. Uh, you're still stand-upping. Um, so the tour continues. Uh, we've had the, we have this live audience, which we've planned for you for weeks and well, months in advance yeah. just to Bit keep... of an anti-climax from Take That, isn't it? No way, man. No way. <laughs> a guy coming on talking about cleaning buildings. They're going back to the northeast uh, tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, you've already northeast on your tour uh, in Newcastle yeah. and you said it was gangbusters. Oh, man. Newcastle is incredible. What a city. And, and what an area. Like, the northeast is just amazing. And the people, it's just... I did two nights um, at the Opera House and so the Saturday night was rocking and, and had sold out. The Sunday night, you're sort of expecting it to be a little bit quieter, but it was electric, man. It was just both sold out, but yeah, you just want to get back up there. Any particular possible. reason why Newcastle may have been in a good mood on the Sunday? They won 8-0, they beat Sheffield United. That they would always help, wouldn't it? Uh, <laughs> what West Ham was... had lost, we'd lost. So uh, yeah, but they were, I think it's a really not. I, I think... It's a weird thing when you first start, when you come back to stand up, and I'd had quite a while off, and you sort of, as, as a southerner, you're never sure how you're going to sort of <laughs> travel. Convert, yeah, travel. And, but I think the sort of working class sort of roots of Newcastle as a city, you sort of straight away feel one of their own. And man, it's great. We filmed a lot of King Gary up there as well. So it's, it's an amazing city. I, yeah, I love it. Got, Newcastle is unique, isn't it? There's no uh, doubt about it. Because of where it is, I think. Because it's sort of, I know it's technically in England. Well, no, it is in England. It's not technically in England. <laughs> but it's sort of, when you get there, it's its own place. It's, it's somewhere between. Scotland and England it doesn't feel like it's in England and you know you've got your own culture haven't you you've got a character larger than life and it is fun you go out in Newcastle for the night and you you, you, you know you do better to, to have a better time anywhere else yeah, in I the mean, world I'll could we say you go out for Newcastle for a night and it ends up three yeah, of course um, <laughs> that's yeah. a beautiful Newcastle years <laughs> Um, so Tommy's back on tour. Uh, Tom Davis underdog tour. Go for tickets to bigtomdavis.com. You were not in the middle of it. You're only a quarter of the way through it because it's the biggest tour ever, isn't it? It's now going to go down in the Guinness Book of Records as the biggest <laughs> tour ever. Um, how's it going? Amazing, man. Yeah. yeah, it's been a joy. It's it's been quite. I took quite a long time off stand up, you know, with the acting and for one reason or another. And it's been a yeah, it's been amazing. You know, you sort of travel in the country and selling out a lot of these places. I thought. December would be it, a homecoming gig in Croydon Forget at Fairfield it. Halls. And then, um, yeah, Flo, my agent, was like, no, let's, let's do a few more. So we've got about another 40, 45 yeah, in. So. A few more? Um, so, January, February, March, April, May. June. June, yeah. June sorry. And, uh, sorry, yeah. I didn't get to that page. <laughs> and then we're looking at hopefully maybe doing a few in Europe. But it's, it's you know, it's I think as well in, in the world where it sits at the moment, it's a pretty amazing thing to go out and make, you know, have a room full of people that you're making laugh. And, yeah. and uh, it's a great thing. I've, I've been blessed. I've been, you know, done a lot of television and stuff but actually to be in a room with people and hopefully sort of spill a bit of joy telly helps her doesn't it does to be the face oh, in mate, the place of course it does no yeah, doubt about like that Gary and, and the podcast and yeah yeah, I think it it all builds up but yeah I mean stand up was always the thing that I wanted to do when I sort of what's getting started. funny as the tour goes on which bit of the of the gig uh, and has anything uh, been cold since the coach set um, some oh. of it no you know what the, the mo most funny is just messing around with the audience I think like the, the new bits you find in a room I think like that sort of come from nowhere well, so like what for example uh, the other day I was just doing a weird thing with my hand. It looked like I was stroking an invisible dog. So um, so for the whole gig, we just had like I had this invisible dog that was like a Britain's Got Talent thing that was coming on. And every time there's a bit of a lull, I'll just pretend I had an invisible dog, <laughs> invisible dog on stage with me. And uh, I mean, the dog's come on tour now, so it's not quite as lonely. Uh, it's like invisible, take that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, actually they're really here. Would you like to stroke them, ladies? <laughs> Mark's just sitting here with me like that. Here we go, mate. He's standing. Hello, Mark. <laughs> When I was, was at university, my um, my <laughs> mates used to take the Mickey because they said that I'd um, that my, my girlfriend, my new girlfriend, was um, was made up. Yeah. But the joke was on them because they were made up too. Oh, hey. <laughs> oh wow! That's... Don't take that on tour, yeah. you? Come on! No, no, no. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <some> stronger stuff. <laughs> so go on, well, so the invisible dog. The invisible dog, and you know what? I, I like the crowd work. I like messing around with the crowd. I right. find that's a fun thing. Is is uh, you know. 
I, I just think it's and the building up the more comfortable you start feeling with the material I, I'm sort of a weird thing as well because in 2000 when I first started out I sort of wanted you know, Lee Evans and Peter Kay and they'd go out and put on these actual shows and you wouldn't watch it at home until they released a DVD or a, you know and now everyone's giving material constantly on social media but I like to keep it for the people who bought a ticket and I like that to be quite a special occasion yeah, yeah. so it's, it's, it's yeah, I'm not putting any of it on social media it's there for people who brought tickets to come along and I think it's just, you know I you know, it's it's a pretty amazing thing, man. I like the the feedback's just been incredible. It's quite emotional, I find it. Go on, tell us more about that. Well, because you know, I stopped for six years. I had real anxiety. I'd, I'd sort of really sort of walked away from doing that. I'd never thought I'd do it again, if I'm honest. And and I sort of I'd struggled a bit with with one for mental health and and sort of when my daughter was born and uh, I'm going to get quite deep, but and my godmother passed away. It was a bit like life and death is a big thing. Obviously, it's the biggest thing. And actually, when you start looking at stand up and actually doing it, I was like, it's just standing on stage and having a bit of fun. So getting back to doing that, I was just sort of actually, if, if it doesn't go well, it just doesn't go well. It's just it's a night that's not work. But if it goes great, it's the best feeling in the world. So actually taking that pressure off, and that's been the most amazing thing actually, just just going out there and being yourself. And I, I sort of used to try and sort of script it too much, and now I think just go and have a laugh like you're in a pub, and everyone in the audience is essentially just an extension of your mates and they all feel a part of something. And, and I think that's a really special feeling. And I've been very lucky, you know, I've done films, and I've done tele, I've gone far further than I ever thought, you know, first time I ever stepped on stage and I was scaffolding and I thought, let's just try this. It'll be a laugh. And, you know, 15 years down the line to do the things I've done, it's been amazing, but stand there in front of a crowd, you know, that, that's a real personal feeling. And I hope that everyone leaves feeling, you know what, that's a pretty special night. And, and, and I realise my audience is very working class. And I think like, they get, you know, one night out a month where they afford to come out and I've got to give them a night. And you best believe that they're going to leave that. It's going to be the best night of the month. You could just do that speech. I'd go for the speech <laughs> with you. That was amazing. That was amazing, mate. Cheers, mate. So cool. Cheers. So you've dropped the attachment to it, haven't you? That's yeah. the thing. Because the, the thing that kills anything we try and do isn't the intention of setting out to do something. It isn't um, the optimism. It isn't the strategy. It isn't the reasons for doing it. You know, whatever those reasons might be, they might, might be sort of ill uh, minded. You know, they may be more greedy than you think they are. And you're trying to make mitigate that with, well, I'm doing it for this reason, not that reason. But the point is, as long as you're not attached to it, yeah. it's, it's okay. And that's, and so why, why do you think you became attached to it? What happened um, at the beginning of that anxiety? Do you think, uh, was it because you had something to lose because you had success, which is also a bit weird? Yeah, I think you, you're never you're not cultivated to sort of have success coming from where I, you know, I've no great education. I, I, I don't. So when I sort of start getting success, there's a lot resting on it. You, you, I know how hard life is. I've worked through recessions. I've worked on buildings. I knew how tough it is to do a real job. So the thought of at times going back to that isn't necessarily the scariest thing because you've done it for 20 odd years. But then you are like, wow, I've got a bit of success here and things are moving up. So you know what you've got to lose. Yeah. And I think I probably started then just preparing too much, putting too much pressure on the whole thing. And actually it's a really interesting thing. I think when, it, when you're doing something like, you know, if you're a musician, a stand up or, you know, whatever you're doing, for me, it's not about me. It's about the audience having a great time. It's about them going away. So you've got to just take the ego out of it. And just go as long as they're having a good time, as long as they have a great time. The best thing, it's not about you. It's about you just giving them something that they can go home. And, yeah. and when I remember, like Lee Evans for me was was God. I think Lee Evans was the greatest. And when I used to watch Lee, it was about the people. And Lee just had that that way. And I know that work that goes into it. I know, yeah, you know, it's not you know just turn up and just you know knock out an hour and a half of stand up. But you you have to you have to remember. It's them we've paid the money. Yeah. It's them we've got to have a good night. Well, he gave himself, drinks. didn't yeah. he? Yeah. Oh, mate. He gave everything of it. Oh, he was mate. exhausted when he came oh, on stage. And some. And that's, yeah. you, you know, that's the level that you've got to try and reach, right? Yeah. So uh, we had a guest booked to come in a couple of weeks ago who actually stars with Hannah Waddingham on her Christmas special. And um, so he's coming in. I'm thinking, I haven't seen Lee Evans for ages. The last time I saw Lee was at the stage door of the theatre where he was in The Producers, which I went to go and see eight times. I thought, can't wait to see him. Can't wait to see him. I had all these questions ready for him. I haven't seen him for ages. Known each other for ages. Da, 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 da. And all the way up until Vassal introduces the guy on the air, and it's Luke Evans. It's not Lee Evans. <laughs> and I'm like, shoot, I had a whole different interview here. I mean, it was okay. You yeah, know, yeah, it was yeah. like, and then. Um, uh, he popped up on Hannah Waddingham's Christmas special last night and I, I, I a bit of cold sweat yeah. went down the back straight away again. Um, it's funny though, because you you spent so how 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 many how much of your life did you spend on on scaffolding? Scaffolding and labouring. I mean, look, I'm, I'm being very very uh, kind to myself when I call myself. I was a labourer, not a scaffolder. I was like picking stuff up and carrying it. It's as good as I ever got. But um, long time, man. Yeah, like 
20, yeah, 15, 20 years on and off. Like, even when you start getting a bit of success, I was going back to it because, you know, I remember first one of the first interviews I ever did was with someone sort of saying, oh, you know, it must be nice getting a job as an actor now because it's sort of, um, you know, you're used to work on building sites. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, building sites is a regular wage. And also, have you ever had any building done on your house? It's expensive. It's not like I was sort of living hand to mouth, but yeah, yeah. all of a sudden you're an actor and it's, you know, it's, uh, yeah, long. And also, like, you know, I loved it, man. A lot of my character is brought up from that sort of the calves and the pubs. And the I lo- I've loved every job I've ever had. Yeah, I, I, I think Including that's... Including Top Gear. <laughs> <laughs> now. <laughs> now there's a bit of water under the bridge. <laughs> Look back. <dude. laughs> oh, Jory was out for a while, I've got to be honest. Uh, right, so that's the tour, bigtomdavies.com. Uh, Tom is cracking on with his tour. He's, he's the first ever comedian, I think officially, we did check, and it's never happened before. He's the first of, uh, comedian to officially tour for the rest of his life. <laughs> um, um, but also, you're in this film Wonka, which yeah. is like going to be. I think it's going to be the big Christmas film. Yeah, I think so. It's it's look, it's an amazing thing to be a part of. It's incredible. Tell, like, tell us all about it. First of all, tell people the story. This is it's an origin story. So it's a prequel to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Got it. It's about how uh, Willy Wonka gets the Charlotte Chocolate Factory. So it's it's an incredible. Uh, it's like, yeah, it's a really it's a beautiful script. It's an incredible thing to be a part of. It's really like. Um, inspirational it's sort of yeah it's just kind of it's kind of what the world needs at the moment i just think it's a really it's full of heart timothy chamelay is is just remarkable as willy wonka and it's it's a pinch me moment you know it's sort of like when i got the offer to do it i'm like wow this is the cast is incredible um all my scenes with timothy and uh olivia coleman are you in loads I mean, well, you never know. I've got to see the premiere, and hopefully, I've, I'm, I'm not doing all this bigging it up, and then I'm on the cutting room floor. Um, <laughs> so you got Olivia, you got Timothy Chalamet, yeah. you've got Hugh Grant, Hugh Grant, yeah. Um, uh, you've got Michael uh, Keegan Key, um, uh, Matt Lucas, Matthew Bayton, uh, uh, jo- uh, Pats and Joseph. It's like a really great and the pedigree is behind the camera as well. So it's the people who made oh, Paddington, man, Paul King. So I did Paddington two with Paul. King. Yeah, you did. Yeah, of course and you did. Um, Paul was uh, Paul's been amazing for me. Like Paddington two, I had like when we first started, I was just like almost like an, I was sort of an essay almost. I had like uh, one line, and I was called Tattoo Prisoner. And slowly as the film developed, I sort of got the more of the part grew and grew. And by the end of it, you sort of got a full arc. And Paul was amazing for that. And and Paul's just vision of what this movie is and. It's sort of like, yeah, it's a really beautiful thing and it really encapsulate, encapsulates, I'm trying to be clever there, use a word I didn't really fully understand, <laughs> um, encapsulates um, that sort of Roald Dahl spirit and, and, and sort of those books. And, and it really is, it's a, I, th- I think it's, it's a real family film. It's something to sort of go along and watch. And, and I, th- I think, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lovely thing. I think when you get a film like that and you can go along as a family and bond and watch something all together, it's very special, man. And there's a really little Hugh Grant in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, he's yeah. shrunken down to an umpa lumpa. A 12 inch, yeah, in a, in a glass jar. Wow. Think, well, you know, it's, it's a weird thing because I've not. Like, we didn't know that Hugh was involved. Like, he, that was top secret. Was that it? Was, yeah, man. That for the rest of the cast, we didn't know that. So it's like an amazing thing when you saw. And Hugh's a man. I mean. The gentleman, I think Hugh's incredible as an actor. He's I think. getting better and better oh, and mate, better what, and better. What absolute, you know, from, you know, again with Paddington too, that the performance in that was just remarkable. And, and, and just his comedy bones, his comedy chops are incredible. Yeah. Just almost become one of the best character actors in the world now, I think. He's amazing. What do you, you haven't mentioned what your role is. Uh, I don't know how much I can say, if I'm honest. Uh, it's, I'm sort of, yeah, I mean, strangely, I'm just a sort of big Wally. Um, uh, very sort of car, typecasting it. Um, no, look, it, it's, a, it's a nice. <laughs> Me and Olivia have an amazing story right. through it, and it's. Uh, I mean, how long were you on set for? A lot, yeah. We, how and how my long daughter did it take? had just been born, so I, if I'm going to be really honest, my I don't remember a lot of it, like because my daughter was literally born, so I was doing nights with my baby, and, and like you haven't made it up. You are actually in the film, aren't you? Yeah, I am. Okay, yeah, good, yeah. Good, yeah. Good, I don't, hopefully, I'm not, I've not just imagined that whole it, thing. It was that just that a sort of brain can dream. really get to you, mate. Tell me about it. I mean, she's two now, so it tells you how long the process is, but um. Yeah, I mean, quite a bit. And, and it was like, and it's amazing because I'm, I'm with Olivia a lot of the time. So sort of Olivia Coleman is everything you want to be and more. She's just an amazing... What did you being. learn from her? You know, I learned a lot about parenting, really, actually. She was pretty incredible <laughs> More than that. Yeah, she, was, uh, she gave me a lot of tips. <laughs> no, like her, her act, you know, to be on set with someone like that. And Timothy, man. Timothy's a real deal. You know, that, you know, it's an easy thing to say when you're working with people of that level but that thing of the x factor or someone who has that little drop of magic timothy's really special and then you know we'd chill out and we'd 
hang out and play FIFA and whatever uh, together, which I realise is a bit weird, me having a relationship with any other 23-year-old boy. Like, that's a bit weird. Um, <laughs> but um, he's a great kid, man. He's, he's lovely and, and very grounded, very down-to-earth. Where did you so, make it? Leaston Studios. We did a bit of filming at Bath. So, yeah, it was, it was like... Genuinely, I will say this. I mean, I was the only. Everyone else had these big Winnebagos. Yeah. I was the only person on there. I had like a three, what's called a three-way trailer. So I had this tiny little room, and I was like, "This is insane!" Like Olivia went, "Why have you got such a small trailer?" And I was like, "You're the biggest person on set." I, was like, I have no idea. And it was my agent had insisted upon it, so I kept grounded. I was like, "What? Well, like, I was the only person I had." A, I had Time like a to change baby. agents. Yeah. <laughs> <I> was, <laughs> That's strange. Is I that true? They all go back and have a sleep at lunch. I couldn't even fit him. I was like a <laughs> like daddy long legs crazy, in a gra- glass jar. It was awful. It Unless was, it uh, helped you with your character, because you're not telling as much about your character. No, no. So maybe it's your agent going... Yeah, no, he's pretty put upon. So, yeah, maybe that was it. Yeah, maybe yeah. that's the whole I'm, thing. Like the new Daniel Day-Lewis. The patience yeah, yeah. of Job. Just treat me like rubbish, and I'll give you a performance. So weeks or months? Uh, sort of a couple of months and then reshoots and then you sort of reshoots. back and forth. Reshoots, yeah, yeah. you know, you're a big yeah, Charlie Potatoes. It's, um, it's reshoots, like, bit of ADR. It was, um, I mean, actually, like, they, I don't, yeah, I've got to tell you, because I love you. Yeah, so one of the worst <laughs> things that happened was they, they built all these amazing sets. Yes. They're incredible. Like, the, you've never seen anything like it. They essentially built the whole of Chocolateville. And um, they built, like, the Chocolate River. And it was, like, <sighs> sort of, you know, and they were showing us all around. And they were showing me and Olivia, and we we're like, oh, wow, this is incredible. And I just sort of like walked onto the chocolate river and fell through it, right? Broke it. Right. And Olivia's, oh my God, Tom's broken the chocolate river. And I was like, I thought you could stand on it. And they was like, it's been built for Timothy Chamolet to skip up, not you at 22 stone. It was awful. It was one of the, it was like my first day and everyone was just staring at me like, Can you, like, you know, you, you never hit, think you're going to hear in your life someone going too far, too far. Tom Davis has broken the chocolate river. Tom Davis has broken, yeah, awful. Having to walk around and apologise to everyone on set. Yeah, that was that. That's the story of my life. I bet really. it took some building that old chocolate. Yeah, it did, and rebuilding. Oh, um, goodness me, could you help out with that? Yeah. <laughs> in my lunch time. Yeah, I am quite handy. Yeah. I can, I can, can I make up with this? Please don't get rid of me. How how deep into filming was the Chocolate River incident? That was quite. Cool. That was like on my first day. All yeah, oh, right, because yeah, yeah, that could have gone either way, couldn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then for, for the rest of it, sort of like I was because I wasn't one of the most known cast. People knew me as the big guy broke the Chocolate River. <laughs> um, so, uh, I don't know. That might even be my credit on the film. Uh, <laughs> well, you still to find out. Have you seen the finished article? No, man. I'm seen it uh tuesday you're going to the premiere is, yeah the premiere yeah which nice. is gonna be amazing right it's like yeah it's a long way from from waking up in the morning on a cold day like you know and getting out on a site it's an incredible thing and i think that's that's life right you've got to pinch yourself you've got to take those moments in and you've got to, you've got to enjoy it it's a pretty amazing journey so like yeah i'm with my wife we've got a night out. Well, one of our first nights off proper night date night gonna go out for a bit of food have a cut of drinks well, you, after. You don't live that far away from me now, so if you need any childcare, I'm your man. Oh, wow. Because yeah. uh, uh, I go to bed before most children at half yeah. seven anyway, so that's all right. She's, yeah, she's, she's, a, she's a mad little thing. She's, she's incredible. She uh, yeah, warms my heart You're every day. You're in a good place, aren't you, at the moment? Yeah, yeah, man. I was, but then I think like life. I was, I was like this when I was. I'm no, but I, no, I don't care. You can always, life can always be better. It doesn't have to be bad to be better. No, no, you seem like you are right in the middle of what it's all about. Yeah, but also I think it's just perspective, isn't it? It's just like whatever you're doing. I think you've got to wake up in the morning, try and put a smile on, and get about it, and get amongst it, as we used to say in the nineties. And uh, yeah, it's it's just you know, there's a lot lot of tough stuff and a lot of hard stuff going on in the world, and you're blessed if you can get up and you're not a part of that. And so do you hope to to have finished this tour for your daughter's 18th birthday? <laughs> I think I'll probably be going back on tour for her 18th birthday anyway. Things are going, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be a crazy one. Yeah, I don't think I'll ever stop. She'll be having me out of work when I'm about 90. Shall we have a massive round of applause to Tom Davis? Yeah, Thank come you. on, let's go for it. Yeah. Cheers, Tom. Thank you very You're the best, man. Control room round of applause. Yeah. BigTomDavis.com for tickets for his tour. It is ongoing. Don't worry. Um, you can't miss it because it goes on for like the next 100 years. And um, the film, Wonka, is out on the 8th of December uh, across the country, across the world. Well done, Tom. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Thank you for uh, having me. Happy Christmas. Thank you, ladies. Enjoy the rest of the day in London. <laughs>